Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and today I am coming to you from my garage studio space where I can spread out and make a giant mess on my six foot table. It's also where I film Tutorial Tidbits. And today I am playing with texture rubbing plates. These are plastic raised texture plates that you can get on my Amazon resource shopping art supply page. That was a long title for something that shouldn't have been that complicated. Anyway, that link is below. Um, and they're wonderful for um, pressing and removing paint on the gel plate. I also use them for crayon rubbing texture. So I'll do a crayon rubbing over the texture plate and then the fluid acrylics resist off the off the crayon, but that's a that's a tip for another day. Today, we're gonna to be using these on the gel plate, but I just wanna let you know that they have lots of possibilities, tons of creative possibilities with these little pieces of plastic. Who knew? So anyway, if you've got a minute and you're wearing a tank top, we could stay out here for a few and check this out. Welcome back. Today, I am going to be working on two uh, light colored solids that I already printed on the gel plate. This one is uh, gold that was pulled after this teal, so it's got a little bit of teal in it. And this one is teal that was uh, lightened up with some interference um, red to sort of spread the teal out so it wasn't quite so opaque. So I've got sort of two light and almost neutral, uh, not super vibrant colors as my base layers. And then I'm going to go over the top of those colors um, with uh, anthraquinone blue and Van Dyke brown. These are dark, dark colors and they will provide me a very high contrast against these light sheets. And I'm doing that uh, because I want you to really be able to see this effect. Um, this effect can be subtle and it can be high contrast, but for the purpose of demonstrating, I'm going to show it as high contrast so it's the most obvious to you. So um, these are just found papers. Uh, I've got my gel plate, I've got my brayer, and I have got um, some texture rubbing plates by Jack Richeson. And these are on my Amazon shopping list. That link is gonna be below. Um, these are plastic uh, raised texture plates that work wonderfully for pressing and removing paint on the gel plate. You can see that they're very well loved and I have an old set. So the patterns on mine may not be consistent with the patterns on the new set, but regardless, they're still, um, the, the patterns are wonderful for creating collage paper on the gel plate. So I'm gonna get one that I can make sure is going to be real um, obvious so we can show you um, a very uh, good effect. So let's go with that one and perhaps this one. So we'll use these two texture plates. And um, what we're going to do is take the texture plate and press and lift to remove paint after we've put it on the plate. And it is going to remove a subtle amount of paint. It works different than a stencil because a stencil is a mask and it totally blocks the paint. And, and where the stencil is, the paper will be white. This we're just going to press and remove and we're going to remove some of the paint, but not all of it. So the pattern is not going to be white. It's just going to be slightly lighter version of the paint that we put on the plate. So let's get started. Let's start with the Van Dyke Brown and we'll go over this sort of neutral uh, golden teal with that. So we're gonna spread that out in a nice thin layer on the plate. Then I'm gonna take my texture plate, I'm gonna press it and lift and press it and lift. You can sort of see that pattern in here but you're gonna see it more obvious when I transfer it to the prepared paper. So the prepared light colored solid is going to go right over that texture plate pattern and you're going to get a subtle removed pattern. Now we've still got um, color there. So luckily I've got, a, I've got a, a more bold teal solid right here and let's just pick that up. We got a second print out of this. So this is why it's a good idea when you're gel printing to start out by making a bunch of light colored solids. So when you get these ghost print opportunities, you've got a paper to put it on. So I wasn't expecting to be able to get a second print out of this. This is an old encyclopedia page and it wants to stick a little bit. So very carefully. So here's my second press and remove texture plate print. And you can see that it is uh, more obvious on this one because it's higher contrast and it was a uh, less uh, paint left over. So there's two different versions of that press and remove. So let's try it again with the anthraquinone blue. So 
So we're gonna roll out a thin layer. I didn't bother cleaning my brayer because I had dark Van Dyke brown and I'm going for a dark color. So this blue will be a little bit darker. Again, I'm gonna take the plate, press and remove, press and remove, and I'll get over in this corner. And then quickly bring in my prepared light colored solid and transferring the subtle pattern. Isn't that beautiful? That is the texture plate press and remove effect on the gel plate. Happy Friday and thank you for being here.